<laughs> oh, good old The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. If you're like me and have played this game so much that you never thought you could return once more, think again. Because I'm about to show you 400 mods that beg to differ. And yes, you heard that right. I remember spending days and even weeks building my own mod list before just having everything crash on me at the end. But this is a carefully selected and curated collection of mods, along with all of the configurations, tools, patches, load orders, confliction and management and outputs. In short, all the manual steps you need to take care of are taken care of by this collection here. And it really makes everything so much easier. One important word of warning though. To be able to download all the mods with just a single click like I did, you need to have a Nexus Premium membership. If you don't have that, you can obviously still download the collection, but the downloads part will not be automated. You will be able to get all the other benefits like patches and load orders automatically, but you will basically need to spend some hours clicking a download button for each mod. To each their own of course, but the price to pay for Nexus Premium is well deserved for me in this case. And all made possible through one of the biggest and most endorsed Skyrim mod collections ever. Immersive and pure. If you want even more included in your Skyrim journey, there is an alternative version called Immersive and Adult, which includes things like extended romance and more explicit stuff, and which happens to be the most endorsed and downloaded Skyrim collection of all time. So make sure to check that out as well if that's your cup of skooma. And by the way, while I have you here, only 6% of you watching this video are subscribed to the channel. If you enjoy my content guys, it would just mean so much to me if you took the time to make a simple click and sub to the channel. It goes a long way in helping my content reach further, and hopefully also help you in knowing when there's new content to be enjoyed. I'd really appreciate it. Over the years, there are countless mods out there that change Skyrim completely, and often into something that is so far from vanilla that it can actually feel rather jarring. Many are hard to install as well, and will not always even work even though we spend hours searching the forums, downloading, and installing. Enter Immersive and Pure, a Skyrim mod collection which essentially brings the Skyrim Bethesda should have made all those years ago. And the best part? Despite being made up of over 400 mods, this entire collection only weighs in at about 14 gigabytes, and is extremely performance friendly. That's because despite not using any ENBs or other plugins to enhance the image, the visuals have been improved to look so much more natural than in the original game looking so much more crisp and colorful, yet running just as well. Despite incorporating hundreds of mods, the beauty of Immersive and Pure comes from its faithfulness to the vanilla experience. In essence, offering the closest thing you'll come to a Skyrim remastered remastered, so to speak. And I'll show you what I mean later on. But first, let me tell you about a feature that absolutely blew me away. The very start of the game itself. Let's face it, most of us are sick and tired of finally being awake. Hey, you. Finally awake. And even though it's always good fun to see Loki running from the guard, You're not gonna kill me. Archers! spending a good 20 minutes running through a cave with Hadvar, eh, it does feel old by now. That's why it's so refreshing that Immersive Empire completely changes up the entire intro sequence, having a spawn in an otherworldly space known as the realm of Lorcon. We begin, as always, with a character creator, this time actually rivaled by none, where you're able to make your regular old Joe or something different entirely. I love how beautiful and creative this place looks, with its towering mansion, mesmerizing colors, and a particularly hypnotic sight. But that's not even half of the story here, because what this place actually represents is a role player's wet fantasy come true. We're not just given the opportunity to immediately pick up the Dragonstone from Bleak Falls Barrow, which allows us to skip that first quest entirely, but as you'll see, this is where you get to choose your very own backstory and character foundation. From your personal deity, which affects various skills and playstyles, and which demands that you pray to increase each god's favor with you for new abilities, to actually being able to choose your own starting class, if you want to, is fantastic. And it becomes better when you factor in the awesome shard system. In essence, every character begins with a balance of two shards. Each class, which will define your character and provide you with potentially vital buffs depending on your playstyle, also happens to cost exactly two shards. So you can only choose one class, right? Well, no. You see, we're also given curses and boons here. Curses allow you to willfully harm yourself in certain areas, in order to become better elsewhere. The kicker is that applying one curse provides you with one shard. And so, if you're willing to sacrifice some aspects of your character, you can actually significantly improve on others. For example, 
I really wanted to make a battle mage character that was able to level up faster than normal. And so I gave up a few things, like taking more stamina damage when power attacking, to be able to enable battle mage, spell sword, and the mindfulness boon, making me a potentially very powerful mage with a sword in my right hand. You can even create your very own backstory, adding to the sense of making a character in your own image. But there's more. By exploring this realm, you can even decide to join various factions, making you friends with the Thalmor or even the Forsworn should you wish so, and you can actually pick up various spells and weapons and armor. This last part is something I'm really enjoying because it makes it feel like you're not always starting from the same basic foundation, but that you can outfit your character to match your skills and background. When everything is done and you feel ready to finally begin the game, it's entirely up to you where you begin your journey. Portals around Lorcan allow you to start basically wherever you want in the world, whether it be in dear old Whiterun or the cold and icy College of Winterhold, the latter being perfect for a game as a powerful sorcerer. This of course provides us with a rather curious conundrum. In a world where we're not sent to chopping block and stared the f down by Alduin, how does this game even deal with the main story? It's no understatement that I was blown away by this as well, even though it's technically not a necessity. As a curious cat that I am, I really wanted to check out Helgen, to see what was up since, as we know, we never began in Helgen. I have to be honest and say that I didn't expect much, but I got my ass kicked when at night, this happened. <laughs> I caught Alduin at Helgen after all, and sure enough, he made certain to leave it as warm and cozy as ever. This might not seem like all that much to you, but to me, it was not only an awesome scene on its own, but represents something larger about immersive and pure, namely the fact that everything is made with the player in mind, made to make sense and to immerse you into Skyrim like never before. Perhaps the best example of this, at least my favorite one, is the massively overhauled combat system which has been completely revamped and tailored for third-person play. It's no secret that even though Skyrim's combat was a big step up from Oblivion's, after a few dozen or hundreds of hours, you begin to feel the tediousness of it all. That's why it's so awesome that we finally get to experience combat as it should have been, and the Immersive Collection does this in several ways. First of all, the most amazing change is that it's now possible to properly dodge and block. Dodging at the right time prevents you from taking damage completely, but severely drains your stamina. Dodging is all well and good, but for a Skyrim experience, my preference is blocking. You see, blocking is now actually useful. Blocking is now much more effective both for you and your opponent, but the true skill comes from blocking at the right time. This allows you to stagger and counterattack the enemy, and leads to more awesome duels than you've ever experienced in vanilla Skyrim. It actually feels like a proper combat system now, one that makes you look forward to every single fight. What's more though, is the all new locking system. It's now possible to actually lock onto enemies and switch between them, which can be really useful if you like playing in third person, for example as a mage, where locking on is a godsend. This is also what makes it so much more fun to play as a ranger. I've always loved switching between first and third person, but I'm the kind of player that loves to watch my character do their thing. And doing their thing is not just easier, but so much more awesome when you can do stuff like this. All of this is of course influenced by the all new leveling system. And you might just think what the heck can they even do with Skyrim's levels? Aren't they good to begin with kind of? My friend, you'll be mistaken. Immersive Collections has managed to make every skill that much more influential, making every level and every upgrade feel like a big character improvement. Combined with the aforementioned character background, this really makes each playthrough that much more unique and tailored to your playstyle. If you've never modded Skyrim before, or if you are an experienced mod installer, there are literally hundreds of mods that will make this world so much richer, and you are sure to recognize some of the most famous ones out there right here. Immersive Citizens makes our NPC friends act more natural and populate areas of Skyrim than never have before, and the interiors of this world have been given a real facelift, making the shops and locations actually feel lived in. Immersive Collections features so many new quests it would take a thousand hours to complete them all, and there's even notice boards with small tasks you can finish while on the go for cool rewards. Even the mod that would become a full game is here, and thank the modders for that. This warning keeps coming up. The many shall suffer for the sins of the one. It almost goes without saying that there's an untold number of new and exciting items added to the game as well, 
like new weapons, spells and armor, and even small but awesome things like animations have been tweaked and given that extra oomph, like when you're holding fire in your hand, or when you're sheathing your sword. And then there's of course also the matter of the UI, which has seen some changes as well. Most of the menus now have a real smooth and unique old look to them, much more fitting to a medieval fantasy world than some modernized semi-transparent black window. I absolutely love the fact that we can see our character in the menu now, which definitely gives me Oblivion vibes, and perhaps coolest of all, is the fact that we can loot items without ever opening a separate loot window. Each item is now conveniently displayed out in the world, and taking them is as easy as it's ever been. Notice also how the quest marker now actually details which quest you have assigned, which is also a very nice touch. Similarly, sneaking now tells you where you're spotted from, which really comes in handy in a pinch. But one of the hands down craziest things in this already jam packed mod is the inclusion of Shadow of Skyrim, a mod which, like the game is based on, namely Shadow of Mordor, includes a nemesis system. This means that if you die in battle, you're not forced to load a previous game. In fact, you wake up afterwards, being told you made it to safety and what's happened in the meantime. Now you have to go back to the location you died in. This is because you either want to pick up what you lost when you died from a backpack and or kill the person who took you out. Thing is, this won't always play out the same way. Everyone might be dead, like in the case of this giant who have no idea how died and then pick up your loot, or in another case, your enemies can actually flee the country and take some of your belongings with them, or, and this might be the coolest thing, you'll actually make your way back to where you died and the guy who killed you is actually wearing your armor. Taking him out will complete your quest and if your battle was legendary, settling the score is gonna feel amazing. This is just a small sample of what Immersive and Pure offers, but if I had to sum it up, I'd say it's the perfect mod for anyone who already loves Skyrim but who's looking for bigger and better. It works for basically any computer that can already run Skyrim well, it doesn't take long to download, does not eat up your hard drive space, and the best part, the mod is continuously updated and patched by the creators themselves, meaning updating and fixing is handled by them and continued compatibility between these more than 400 mods remain assured. Immersive and Pure will give a deeper and much more personal Skyrim experience you can play a hundred times over and never have the same thing happen twice. And if you ever needed an excuse to jump back into Skyrim, but have been dreading installing new mods for a fresh experience, then this is exactly where to look. In other words, make sure you have the Mod Manager Vortex installed, click the link below in the description, or just head over to Nexus and download Immersive and Pure, or the Immersive and Adult version for some added uh, flavor, and you're golden. If you have Nexus Premium, that is. It naturally takes a bit longer for free users. If you have any experience with any of the Immersive Collection mods, let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video and sub to the channel. Thank you so much to Kamleberg for sponsoring this video, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.